Our Matthew reading points out that what we wear is not really that important. And generally, it's true. What we are is more important than our outward appearance. However, when it comes to a day like today, war veterans wear their uniforms and medals proudly, and so they should. That's how we recognise the very people we come together to honour. We are a free nation today because of the sacrifices they made and the friends and relatives they lost, and some of us lost, in World War I and subsequent wars, particularly World War II. In Matthew, Jesus shows us how beautiful the flowers of the field are, saying, I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendour was dressed like one of these. Indeed, wild flowers growing in fields are wonderful to behold. As the great John McRae wrote in that famous poem, In Flanders Fields. In Flanders fields the poppies blow, between the crosses row on row that mark our place. And in the sky, the larks, still bravely singing, fly, scarce heard amid the guns below. We are the dead. Short days ago we lived, felt dawn, saw sunset glow, loved and were loved, and now we lie in Flanders fields. Take up our quarrel with the foe. To you from failing hands we throw the torch. Be yours to hold it high. If ye break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep, though poppies grow in Flanders fields. What a beautiful poem. The author wrote it looking out of the back of an ambulance in 1915 in Ypres. He was mourning the death of a friend he'd been unable to save and had had to bury the night before. Brigade surgeon of the 1st Brigade of the Canadian Field Artillery, Colonel John McRae's poem, lives on and touches many hearts. Not only that, but the poem's publication in November 1918, concurrent with the armistice, in the American magazine, The Ladies' Home Journal, led to the red poppy taking on its most significant association with war. The magazine asked its readers if it was conceivable that we shall break faith with those who die for us. The answer arose in the United States and England in the form of a 1921 movement to sell cloth red poppies each November with proceeds to go to the welfare of disabled and economically disadvantaged veterans. And we're still wearing poppies today, whether made of cloth, paper, wool, or some other material. So we haven't broken faith with those who died for us nor should we ever. Over 100 years has not dimmed our regard and respect for them. We will remember them. There are those who wear other colour poppies at this time, and they're worth mentioning and noticing. Pacifists prefer to wear a white poppy. Those who wish to remember the many animals who died in World War I and others particularly horses, choose to wear a purple poppy. Anyone who has read Michael Mpurgo's novel, War Horse, will know what horses suffered. The book's importance has since inspired both a film and a play. Well worth seeing and reading, by the way. World War I may be a long time ago, but its events continue to move us and inspire us. There are people who choose to wear a black poppy, a poppy rose to give it its full title, to remember all black people who fought and died in global wars. All are important 
and all are respectful. I like to picture the four poppies together, inclusive, like this church. We all honour the dead, but long for peace. Will peace ever come? War seems to be part of the human condition. It has been with us throughout history in one form or another. Sadly, according to official figures, there are currently 32 countries involved in some kind of war. Of course, we know about Russia and Ukraine, and many of us in this country and others have met, helped, or housed Ukrainian refugees. Now we are witness to the Israeli and Palestinian conflict and the appalling carnage it is wreaking, and it has only just begun. Shockingly, 40% of the victims so far have been civilian women, children and babies. When will we ever learn? When will we ever have peace? Let's remember all those involved in warfare that we might not see on the news. In civil war are Afghanistan, Central African Republic, Ethiopia, Libya, Mali, Myanmar, Syria and Yemen. At war on account of terrorist insurgents are Algeria, Benin, Burkina Faso, Cameroon, Chad, Democratic Republic of the Congo, Ghana, Iraq, Ivory Coast, Mauritania, Mozambique, Niger, Nigeria, Sudan, Tanzania, Togo, Tunisia and Uganda. South Sudan is at war due to ethnic violence and Colombia and Mexico are involved in drug wars. I consider myself lucky that nobody I've known and loved has died in a war. I have some military connections though. I was actually born in a British military hospital in Germany because my father was an officer in peacetime in the days of national service. My grandfather was a Lieutenant Colonel and was awarded an OBE following World War II. My husband did four tours of duty in Ireland during the Troubles. This is the first year he's not by my side wearing one of his medals. He would never miss paying his respects to servicemen and women. At the end of our Matthew reading, Jesus advises us not to worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. On earth, yes. Our world is messy and people continue to suffer even though the United Nations was formed so that the world might find a way to be at peace. We need to follow Jesus and seek first the Heavenly Father's kingdom and righteousness. Only then will we witness true peace, the peace of our Saviour, the Prince of Peace. Let's concentrate on today, as Jesus advised, on Remembrance Sunday 2023, we thank all those brave people who gave their lives that others may, might have freedom. They're surely in heaven now. God rest their souls. God grant them eternal peace. I wish you all peace too. I wish that you may feel peace in your hearts, despite the sad reality that peace in the world is elusive. The peace of heaven is available to us all though, and it's a promise. A promise from Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace, who is the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. <laughs>